Letting go of every single dream I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wondering Never changes what you see I've tried to win this war, I confess My hands are weary I need your rest Mighty warrior, king of the fight No matter what I face, you're by my side When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters, I wish
wish I could walk through When you don't give the answers As I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you Truth is you know what tomorrow brings There's not a day ahead you have not seen So when all things be my life and breath I want what you want, Lord, and nothing less When you don't move the mountains, I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters, I wish I could walk through When you don't give the answers, as I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you You are my steady hand You are my firm foundation The rock on which I stand Your ways are always higher Your plans are always good There's not a place where I'll go You've not already stood When you don't move the mountains I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters I wish I could walk through When you don't give the answers As I cry out to you I will trust, I will trust I will trust in you Oh, oh I will trust in you I will trust in you Thank you once again. It's another Sunday here at Kaisha the World. Thank you for visiting our YouTube page. We'd like to thank our music ministry. As you can see from the beginning, from the start of uh, this enhanced community quarantine in the Philippines, that our music ministry has really added a lot to its, uh, to its platform. And we'd like to thank uh, our, our whole music ministry here in Kaisha the World, Makati, for all of that. You'll see that from, uh, from how we record our, our pieces, and our songs, all the way to who are the people who are involved sa pag submit ng, ng songs. It's really such a blessing. It's not just that, all the prayers that have come in uh, week on week, we are getting a hundred viewers uh, to come to church, and, and that's really a beautiful thing. And we'd like to thank those that support Christ of the World Makati, but most of all, we'd like to thank our Lord Jesus Christ for providing this opportunity really for us to reach out beyond the four walls of Christ the World, Makati, over in San Antonio. So, uh, we're going to take it off from what uh, we had uh, last week. Thank you, Brother Elise, for uh, for the message you've given us. It's such a blessing that you've shared what you've shared. And it's been it's been three weeks now. Actually, uh, we are, at, at this point, we've already finished our third week in Enhanced Community Quarantine uh, here in the Philippines. And a lot a lot is going on. Maraming tao ang may tanong. Uh, from health, maybe? From safety? Is it safe for me to leave the house? Is it safe for me to, to buy food? Is it, is it basically safe for me overall? Pag pinag-uusapan po natin ang safety, uh, we also look into, like, is it safe for me after the enhanced community quarantine? After the enhanced community quarantine, do I have enough savings for my family? After the enhanced community quarantine, meron pa ba akong trabaho? After this, paano ako magpapatuloy? Paano ako patuloy ang aking pamilya? And we look at how the country is doing. We look at how the world is doing. We look at how our work is doing, how our companies are doing. And we, we basically assess ko ano yung nangyari. And then we'd end up that through this entire quarantine, 
that it is the four walls of our household that really matters. It is the funds that we bring into these four walls. It is the food that we bring into these four walls. How clean we keep our four walls. How safe is our home? How safe are we to continue li living in our homes? How's our families? Our families actually signify the first ministry. So your family, my family, is the personal first ministry. My family is my first ministry. Your family is your first ministry. Before we minister to others, we have to identify and we have to accept that our first ministry is right here at home. So we go into our passage uh, basically for, uh, for this week and this Sunday. And the, the passage that I'd like us to go to, we have two passages. The one is uh, Nehemiah 13, 1 to 31. But we have another passage which is Ephesians 4, 11 to 16. I will let each family focus on Nehemiah 13, 1 to 31 at your own time. But I will be reading Ephesians 4, 11 to 16. It states here, And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro from the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into Him who is the head, into Christ from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which is equipped when each part is working properly properly makes the body grow so that it builds its, itself in love. We think about what's happening in the country and the responsibility of the president. We think about what's happening in our companies. How are the negotiations? How can we keep earning if we can't leave the households? If I am not in the food industry, kamusta naman yung maging negosyo ng kumpanya ko? Kamusta yung maging negosyo ko? Kamusta yung maging kalagayan namin? These are questions na, that, that linger in our minds. And yet, in front of us right now, we have our families. We have our homes. Who is in our home? Who is a part of this ministry? So we have these questions that, that we keep asking ourselves. And when we look at how uh, we are with our families, if our family is the first ministry, then in essence, we should feed our families. Not just physically, but spiritually as well. And how do we do this? How do we, how do we find ways to provide for our families, our first ministry? If we take it from what Ellie said last week, he mentioned something from uh, John 4, 22-23, wherein Christ was not happy dun sa nangyari sa church. It is true that when Christ sees that the church is no longer serving the purpose, pag ang mismong simbahan ay hindi na nagsisilbi ng kapakanan para sa ating Panginoon to build the house of God, to build the church of God, ang ating Panginoon will not be happy. And to a certain extent, our Lord will be mad. Na mentioned in last week uh, something about sa chismis. And let me just clarify that. Um, gossip, um, chismis, a lot of these come up because of the lack of communication, if we, if we notice that. There is a lack of communication. There's a lack of confirmation of facts. Because sometimes, we just rely on the information coming from a source that is comfortable. Dahil comfortable tayo sa source na yun. Dahil kaibigan natin, dahil may binibigay sila sa atin, dahil meron tayong nakukuha. Pero, the truth is, 
is there enough communication for us to confirm these details? Itong information na nakukuha natin, do we get to confirm this? Why are we talking about this? Because if your family is your first ministry, and you are the head of your family, I would remember nung nag-start ako sa trabaho, when I was much younger, wherein I would only depend on what my boss says. Pag sinabi ng boss ko, oo na lang ako. Pag sinabi ng boss ko, gagawin ko yung trabaho. And then as I started getting farther, or achieving further uh, at work, I noticed that I can't just rely on one source. Yes, if it comes from someone, I have to follow because of compliance. But in terms of facts, I can't just ask one person for the facts. If I need to get my sales numbers, if I need to get the right forecast, and I only ask one person, I only have the perspective of one person. If we are to lead our families, our first ministries properly, and we will only rely on the facts given by a few people and not from valid sources, and a lot of these valid sources, we end up providing a disservice to our first ministries. If we go to what Ephesians 4, 11-16 says, we could actually refer to 1 Corinthians 13, 11. And this is for those, especially those who want to build your own first ministry, for those who want to start a family, for those who want to start leading. It states here, When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. If you want to eventually lead, if you are now leading your household, that is your ministry. And even greater, if you are leading a bigger ministry in terms of number of people, apart from your household, whether it be the church, whether it be your Bible study, whether it be your disciples, whether it be a small group, whether it be a nation or a company, these are all ministries. You have to no longer speak like a child, no longer think like a child, no longer reason like a child. You get your information from one, then you declare to a thousand that what you're saying is the truth, and then eventually you'd find out it's not the truth. You know why? Because you reasoned like a child. Because you thought like a child, you conducted yourself like a child. You, my friend, lack maturity. Kuya Jel, I, kasi yung pinanggalingan ko naman, that person is a pastor. That person is a president. I understand. But it is your due diligence. I am talking to you, the leader of the household. I am talking to you, the leader of the ministry. I am talking to you and checking with you. Are you making sure that your facts are straight? Is it straight? Because in order for you to check and you are only depending on one source, I am telling you, as a professional, you are putting yourself in a position to fail. Remember, if you, if you prepare, then there's a smaller chance that you would fail. But I would tell you that if you don't prepare, you're basically preparing for failure. And part of your preparation is getting your research done. Do you want to know what's in the Bible? Yes, of course. When I say that you get more sources, of course the Bible is a good source. But then, why would you just read the Bible and then do everything alone? You're going to preach about fellowship, yet you don't fellowship. You're going to preach about leading, but you only choose those who you want to lead. You want to preach about flexibility, about opening your household, about Christians are for everyone, yet you only choose to minister to Christians. And you don't minister to the person next to you. When I talk about ministering, we are not talking about speaking on a YouTube channel. I'm not talking about going on the pulpit and then preaching. 
or then leading a small group. No, when I talk about ministering, it's about what the Bible says. Your ministry is what comes out of your tongue, what comes out of your actions. So whether you like it or not, my friend, you are ministering. But it depends on how you are ministering. However, sometimes we only choose, we, we preach, we only choose a select number of people. We, we only preach to those who don't commit the sin that we preach. We only preach to those who already do what we are preaching. We preach to the choir. Google that. Preaching to the choir. Google that expression and you will understand me further. No, not only should we no longer reason, speak, and think like children. It says here in Psalm 71 verse 18, So even to old age and gray hairs, Ako, nagkakaroon na ako. Oh God, do not forsake me until I proclaim your might to another generation, your power to all those who come. We're not just talking about being mature. We're also talking about if you want to minister, you should be able to reach out, not just to your generation. You grew up in the 80s, kaya pa rin salita ka, para ka pa rin bagets. Diba? Nag, eh, hindi, nag-grow up ako nung ano eh, nung mga late 90s, 2000, kaya para pa rin akong guapings, or eventually parang the hunks. Diba? Pang TGIS pa rin yung language ko. Diba? Pang Gmic pa rin yung language ko. Diba? Yung style of comedy ko kasi, pang tropang trumpo pa rin. Yung style of comedy ko, yung nakakatawa para sa akin, pang dolphin lang. But my friend, you want to lead the ministry? You have to understand what's going on right now. I am not asking you to be on YouTube, to be on Facebook 24-7. But at least, when someone from the youth says ECQ, you understand what that means. If someone says LOL, you would at least understand what that means. You know why? Because if you want the Word of God to reflect in your life, but you can't communicate that to the younger generation or to another generation, then what is the point of you ministering? We've already talked about this in the past few weeks. You're going to talk to someone at ang language na sinasa, ang ginagamit lang niya ay sabihin natin Bisaya lang at English. Pero pinipil po siyang intindihin ng Tagalog at ang masabihin mo, Pero Kuya Jel, kasi Tagalog salita ko eh. Then you cannot minister to that person because he will not understand you. She will not understand you. You're ministering to someone who is 13 years old pero pinipil ko intindihin niya kung paano ka magsalita. How can they understand you? How can she understand you? Right now, we are in our households. It's our first ministry. Does your child understand what you're saying? Diba? Yung apo mo ba, naiintindihan pa yung pag minister mo? I'm not asking you to speak their language, but at least understand where they're coming from. Don't force those you are ministering to to study on their own para by the time mapagalitan mo sila mamaya, maintindihan ka nila. That is not how it works. Pero Kuya Jel, sabi mo, I should not speak like a child. I should not reason like a child. O di, I will speak like an adult. Formal language, I understand. But you know, when the Bible says that you are speaking like a child, that you're thinking like a child, that you're reasoning like a child, that that actually means that children don't try to modify their language for adults to understand. That's what it means. It means, if you are thinking like a child, you are being inconsiderate of the possibility of not being understood. When a child is not understood, a child throws tantrums, umiiyak, sumisigaw, nagagalit, ganun ang bata. 
So if you are 35, if you are 45, if you're 55, or even older, and then someone doesn't understand you in your household while you are ministering, and your reaction is nagagalit ka dahil hindi ka na naiintindihan, guess what? You are my friend behaving like a child. Hopefully, we just have a few more days or just a couple of weeks or maybe just like a week left for this enhanced community quarantine. Hopefully, things change wherein we get to contain this virus. But, may this quarantine help us understand that we are anointed to minister in our households and we have to preach within the confines of our households if we can't minister to those beside us to those at the same dinner table then maybe we should focus more on what's happening inside this quarantine before this quarantine actually ends. We want to confirm what's factual? Gather your knowledge. You've got a phone. You've got the internet. You can communicate with more people. You've got a boyfriend. You've got a girlfriend. You've got friends. You've got family. You've got people you work with. You've got a network. Reach out. Keep communicating. Grow in knowledge as our wisdom will be influenced by the knowledge we have. But if we stick to our college degrees years ago and that's everything we rely on, then we will only be ministering to those who were in the same college, who were in the same classrooms, who understood us. Do we keep preaching to the choir? Is that what we want? Do we just keep preaching to the choir? Gusto ko lang mag-preach dun sa mga nag-agree lang sa akin. Or do we want to go out of this? Hindi siya pwedeng sumama sa grupo natin as believers. Kasi may bahid siya. Why not? Why not? Isn't everyone welcome to the house of God? Isn't everyone welcome to the family of God? How can you be mature? If you can't be mature enough to stick to the principles that the Lord has taught you in order for you to minister and to understand how to communicate the ministry. We are in our homes. Sunday service does not happen in a structured building anymore. It now happens wherever you are. The church is on your phone. The church is on the computer. The church is in your heart. It's in your tongue. It's in your eyes. It's in your actions. It's in your scent. It's in your nutrition. The church is there. And let me close by saying that Children have a hard time letting adults understand what they want. And when they don't get what they want, they behave in a certain way that the adults will even further not do what the children want. So if we start communicating like children and reacting like children, my friends, why should the Lord bless us with others understanding us? when we don't even start with understanding others. It is basic. So let me close us in prayer and let's surrender our perspective to our Lord God and may the quarantine that's actually happening between our four walls work and when this ECQ is over, May we expand those four walls to welcome more people in to the ministry that we will always consider to be our first. Let's pray. Lord God, we'd like to thank you. Jesus, thank you for the cross. Basically, Easter is just around the corner. And we pray 
the end of the ECQ is right around the corner, which means that the virus is contained, which means that we are ready once again to leave our households and to be ministers beyond our first ministry. That our first ministry will expand to even greater walls, for bigger walls, so that we, in return, can show the love that we have experienced from you. Lord God, bless our church and bless our families. To those that are frontliners, bless them. May you speak through them that they may speak your word and your love that can be experienced by everyone that they touch. And for those that are infected, O oh Lord God, we surrender their sickness to you. And we ask that may you speak to them so that you can speak through them when this virus is defeated. This virus is defeated through your love, not just through what physically we can feel. So Lord God, we lift up to you our church, and in Jesus' name, we surrender ourselves, and we pray. Amen. We'd like to thank you once again for attending Sunday service here at Kaisa the World Makati. Maraming salamat po sa lahat. You can actually find that you can donate and you can give your offerings and your tithes to our church by contacting our Facebook group or even by commenting on YouTube. And then we'll have someone contact you for that. We'd like to thank you. And we have a lot of great music coming from our members, those that provide us love. And we'd once again we'd like to thank you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you and have a great and safe week. Stay at home and God bless you.
the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. Hear our prayer. We've gathered here today. We're gathered here to pray. Hear our cry. Oh Lord, we need your mercy and we need your grace today. Hear us as we pray. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our Father, hear us from heaven, forgive our sins, we pray. Forgives our sins, we pray. 